Welcome to APCUG's Wednesday Workshop, where we get together in the middle of the week to learn more about tech. March is National Backup Your Computer Month on March 31st. And so this month, we're going to be focusing a lot on backing up because as the sign says, data loss is just right ahead. Today, we're gonna to begin our presentation with a big background and explanation of what all backing up is and involves. Our great friend who stepped in at the last minute to take over the keynote spot is Adam Drake. He happens to be from the Licking County Computer Society as we, um, um, as we call it, East Central Ohio Technology Users Club. And he's filling in today, but we're glad he's here. Adam Drake is a software engineer group manager at PNC Bank. He's also a member of the Career and Technology Education Centers of Licking County, which we call CTEC, as a member of their Information Technology Advisory Board. After graduating from high school and the same C-Tech, Adam went on to get advanced training from Central Ohio Technical College, DeVry Institute, and Franklin University. His hobbies include playing with Linux, running, and playing video games. And Adam had some help today in preparing this presentation from ChatGPT. So he's gonna be talking to us all about the inner workings of backup and what we should know. So Adam, it's over to you. All right, John, thank you very much. You can hear me, right? Yeah. All right, I am going to share my presentation. If you guys can let me know when you see it, that would be. I'll let you know we see it. Don't forget this quirky thing that you've been muted again. Bye-bye. Nope, still muted. Yeah, for some reason, when I'm sharing my screen, I have to, you have to ask me to unmute or else it won't let me do it. So. That's um, strange. Sorry about that, but we'll cut all that part out. No, that's all right. Now, so I can make it full screen again. There we go. All right. As John mentioned, my name is Adam Drake. I'll be doing a presentation on computer backups. And I had some assistance from chat GPT. So um, as John also mentioned, I'm the new vice president of the Licking County Computer Society here in Central Ohio. I am a software engineering group manager at PNC Bank. Um, I think my story pretty much lines up with what he shared there. So I'm not going to repeat everything. But uh, for chat GPT, for those who haven't heard of it, it's an open AI model that interacts in a conversational way. Um, it's basically, it's an API interface, but it's also a, it looks like a chat window in a browser. And if we have if we have time at the end of the demonstration, I can show you guys what that looked like and how I was able to uh, use chat GPT to help me uh, create this presentation in a, uh, an efficient and uh, fun way. All right, so some of the goals of OpenAI, can you guys still see me or no? We can see your presentation. Okay, I didn't know if my camera went off or not. Okay. No, it's there. All right, great. So we want to talk about, you know, understanding computer backups, why they're important, what the different options are for the various platforms, um, what we consider best practices, and then, you know, more into the disaster recovery levels of 
computer backups where they affect the enterprise and what some of the options are there. And then, uh, as I mentioned, we'll have a uh, demonstration. So understanding computer backups. So what exactly is a computer backup? So it's basically a duplicate copy of data that you have stored on your computer or any computing device, phone, what have you. And you create that copy in case you ever need to recover your data files. If, if the data is lost, accidentally deleted, corrupted due to hardware issues, you know, a hard reset on an old hard drive. We know what that used to do before journaling came along. Um, or if there's a disaster and it's destroyed. Um, so then there's backups. We use those backups to restore the data after the event, such as the failure, error, virus, accidental deletion, et cetera. Um, there's different types of backup. Um, we have, we'll get into this a little more in a little bit, but we have full backups, incremental, differential, which those are kind of very similar and hard to discern between. And then image backups is another type. Each one of those types of backups has their own advantages, disadvantages, and time and place. Um, so backups can be stored many different types of places. Uh, it can be as simple as an internal, external hard drive attached to your computer, even a thumb drive. Um, network attached storage devices are very popular for backups. Um, cloud in the cloud, as will be mentioned in the here in a little while in a little while and then uh, physical media types like uh, tapes and dvds those are kind of running out of popularity but especially in the enterprise backup tapes are still a very cost effective way to back up large amounts of data for you know fairly fairly inexpensive media cost um so you know regularly creating and updating these backups is going to be crucial to make sure that your important data is able to be recovered if and when that disaster finally strikes. Um, what are some of the type of computer backups? So a full backup is when you take a complete copy of all the data on a computer or device. Uh, it's the most comprehensive type of backup, but it's also the most time consuming and resource intensive. Um, because of that, because of how long it takes to do a full backup, um, some very smart people have come up with, you know, various technologies to do incremental backups, which is a backup where it looks at what's on your machine currently, what's on the backup copy of all your data and files, and it only copies the files that have been updated. Um, some backup technologies, such as rsync in the Linux world, will even look at a file and say, this file has been changed this much. I'm not going to copy over the whole file. I'm only copy these bytes of data that are different between this copy of the file and this file. And so if you have a large file and, and you're um, like a database file on your local machine and you're making changes in there, it won't recopy, not only will it not copy your whole data directory, it'll only copy the portion of that file that's changed. So very, very, very handy technology there. Um, a differential backup is a backup that copies all the data that has changed since the last full backup, similar to an incremental backup but it's faster than a full backup and requires more storage space than an incremental backup. So this, I think my understanding is that the difference on the differential backup is that it keeps the, um, keeps the state of the backup machine before the backup started. And then it basically, it'll, it'll store not only the incremental backup, but the way that the backup used to be. So it'll allow you to have, multiple states of your backup. Um, another phrase that we use for this is snapshotting. Um, and then another type of backup is a mirror backup. It creates an exact copy of the data on the computer, uh, typically used for disaster recovery and can be very expensive in terms of storage space. Um, it's more elaborate than a full backup. It's not just copying the files, it's copying the entire state of the machine. Um, and then a selective backup is a backup that anytime you back something up where you don't want to back up everything, let's say you're backing up your documents folder, but you have a temp folder in there and you don't want to back up your temp folder because you think that would be a waste of backup space and you decide not to back up a folder, um, that's called a selective backup. Um, and then 
Another one, which is uh, sometimes referred to as syncing, is a continuous backup, a backup that automatically saves your changes to data in real time. So it's constantly connecting to the backup over the network, over the USB, however you're connected, constantly copying those changes over. Obviously, that's going to be more expensive as far as uh, compute power and so forth. But if you have the bandwidth for it and you have the need for, you know, up to the last second backup to be available anytime you have an issue, then that could be a solution that you could require. Um, next slide here. Um, we want to talk about the importance of backups for protecting your data, basically. So backing up your important files and documents, it's obviously a safeguard against loss of data due to the due to the, some of the different things that could happen, you know, the hardware failure, system crashes, et cetera. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell what these ladies are doing on this cartoon, but it says our computers are down, so we have to do everything manually. If you can't tell, due to the drawing, they're playing solitaire on their desk instead of on their computers, so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, disaster recovery is, is, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of just regular backing up your data. So disaster recovery plans for actual disasters, like natural disasters, you know, any type of attacks um, that can damage or destroy computing equipment in the data center. Um, they ensure that you can recover your data in the event of a more widespread disaster. Um, another important part of um, backups is version control. So people can use backups to maintain versions of a file or a document that they want to, uh, I mentioned the snapshotting previously, if you make multiple changes to a document, you might want to be able to pull in changes from a later version or go back and, you know, grab changes from a previous version and, and merge them into the, to the later version. Um, and then business continuity is something that's mentioned very frequently along with disaster recovery. So for businesses, backups are considered essential for maintaining operations. Um, in the event of a data loss. Without that backup, the company could have significant downtime, uh, loss productivity. Um, an example might be if you lose even 24 hours of, let's say, a mainframe transactions at a bank, um, you could have people going in and manually re-entering all those transactions. Even if they weren't manual the first time they happened, if they were created by a batch process or even a real-time uh, transmissions from other systems, you would have people in there, you know, doing those 24 hours of transactions manually, and that might take a week to get caught back up. So, yeah, business continuity is definitely probably the most important part of disaster recovery, um, according to a lot of people. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about here is the options for creating backups. Um, as I mentioned before, an external hard drive. That's a good and expensive option for a lot of uh, home users. Um, allows you to back up your data manually by copying the important files. You can always use backup software that comes with a lot of the external drives or purchase backup software separately or use one of the myriad of um, free backup solutions that even you know come with Windows and, and with Mac and Linux and so forth. Uh, another option is cloud storage. Uh, cloud storage services like uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, they offer automatic backups of your files to their servers. It means your files are stored remotely, somebody else's server, and can be accessed from any device with internet access. Uh, the third type, the third option for creating backups is a network attached storage. So a network attached storage or NAS, that's a device that's, um, it's basically an external hard drive, but instead of connecting to your home computer via USB, it could connect to your home network or your business network via, via the network interface, TCP, IP. Um, it can be stored anywhere. It doesn't have to be right next to your computer. And it can be used to store and share those files and also back up data from multiple computers on the network. Um, as I mentioned previously, there's there are multiple options of backup software. Um, there's various options available. Uh, Acronis True Image is a pretty um, popular one for commercial. Um, and there's several others that we'll talk about later 
later in the presentations this morning. Um, and then some operating systems have built-in backup features. Uh, Windows 10, like I said, Mac OS, uh, they have Windows Backup and Restore and Time Machine, uh, respectively. And then there's other options we'll look at here. So Windows Backup options. I know we still have a lot of Windows users here. So um, if you want to just restore a single file, file history is a nice option in Windows. Basically, it lets you right click on the file and you have an option to look at previous versions of the file. Um, and if you have file history enabled in Windows, you can actually restore a file to a previous state right there in the folder or on your desktop where the file is without having to rely on any other tools. Um, starting with Windows 7, they came out with uh, Backup and Restore. Um, it's also available in Windows 10, of course, and 11. It allows you to create system image backups or a backup of your entire computer that you can restore um, if you have, you know, if your machine goes down after a Windows update or, or, or an attack or any, any type of situation. Um, OneDrive is a, another Windows based feature. It basically stores your files on Microsoft's cloud server. You've probably seen the pop up that says your OneDrive is full. And you say, oh, I didn't know I was using OneDrive. What is that? Well, now you know what it is. So Microsoft Windows was trying to update all your files to the, to the cloud. You probably said yes at one point when they, because it'll constantly ask you if you want to use OneDrive and then it'll constantly tell you when it's full. Then they want you to buy more OneDrive space. So that's what that is. And then uh, in the server world, there's Windows Server Backup. It's only available in Windows Server Editions, but it can be used as a backup and restore the entire server or selected files and folders. All right. Next, my favorite, Linux backup options. So these are the options that um, Chat GPT came up with. Um, they're different than, than the ones I'll be sharing with my um, Linux desktop here, here in a few minutes. But uh, some of the Linux options are, are TAR. TAR is a command line tool that's it's been around for ages. It's used to archive and compress files and directories. And then uh, you can untar your file to pull the files back out of it. I don't really think of it as a backup option as much as like a zip it, file zipping option, but it, it's used with a lot of backup tools to shrink down the size of the files. RSync is one of my favorites. That's a command line tool. It's used to synchronize files and directories between two locations. It can be used to create backups, um, not only locally, but also over the network using the uh, secure shell protocol. Very handy. Uh, Bacula, it's an open source network backup solution designed for enterprise level environments. It's used to backup and restore data across multiple computers and platforms and even between data centers. Uh, a newer one that's gotten very popular recently is Duplicity. It's a command line tool that uses uh, new PG for encryption and can be used to back up data to a remote server. And it specifically targets the cloud storage services such as Amazon S3 or uh, Dropbox. And then there's another one listed here that I've never used, but it's a Linux option. It's Amanda. It's an open source backup and recovery software and designed for small to medium sized businesses. Uh, it's used to back up data from multiple computers and platforms to a single backup server. All right. Next here, uh, we have the Mac options. So Time Machine is a built-in backup feature of Mac OS. It creates automatic backups of your entire, entire system including all your files and settings, very similar to what we've seen for the other um, platforms. Um, iCloud, if anyone here has ever had an iPhone, you know what iCloud is. It fills up with pictures and then they want you to pay a dollar a month to, to increase your storage size. So I'm trying to currently figure out a way around that personally, another story. Um, there's something that Matt, that Apple has called, and I've never heard of this, but it's Carbon Copy Cloner. It's a third-party backup software. It's uh, used to create bootable backups of your entire system, which 
it's kind of would be kind of like clonezilla is another option in the linux world where it actually makes a clone of your entire hard drive you can you know copy it to another hard drive and boot up your machine from from that drive just like nothing ever happened so it sounds like carbon copy cloners similar to clonezilla uh, another one is super duper it's a, another third-party backup software for the mac and then backblaze is a cloud based backup service. Uh, it's used to automatically back up your entire system to the cloud for a fee, of course. Uh, mobile phone options for backups. I mentioned iCloud. Uh, it's, it's basically for iPhones and iPads. It's handy until you um, start having large amounts of data. Uh, Google, Google Drive is for Android, but it's also for the desktop. I'll show you guys um, how I back up to Google Drive during the presentation segment here. Uh, Samsung Cloud, something I wasn't familiar with, but it's kind of like Google Drive for Samsung Galaxy phones. Um, iTunes has um, is not used as much as iCloud for the phone storage. Uh, it's more used for media, music, that type of thing. Um, and then that I hadn't heard of. It's a desktop application that allows you to back up your Galaxy phone to your desktop computer, which sounds sounds like a good idea. All right, so best practices for computer backups. You want to ensure your backups are effective. Uh, look at frequency. Depending how important your data is and how often it changes, you're going to want to back update, you know, backup um, daily, weekly. Personally, I I back up every day on a schedule on my personal items. I know for my employer, we do backups, you know, up to the minute versus up through daily, depending on, you know, the, the uh, urgency and on the criticality of the data. Um, storage location, you see 321 there. Um, it's, it's advised to have three copies of your data. Um, and that's one primary copy the copy that you're using, and then two backups. And of those two backups, they need to be on two different types of storage. And one of those backups should be off-site. So if your building that all your data's in is destroyed, you have something that's off-site so that you, uh, at least for your most critical files, you'll still have a copy. Um, another thing here, testing backups. A backup is only as good as your ability to recover using that backup. So if you have, if you've been backing up to your, to your NAS on your home network for five years and your main PC bursts into flames and you need to go to your backup and you find out that the files aren't there or the files are there, but you have no way of actually accessing them after without, you know, without your main computer being there, then your backup's worthless. So testing your backup is definitely, definitely important. Uh, so disaster recovery planning. I put here, I said, what do we do? So my employer, we're, we're a fairly large um, nationwide bank at this point. And what we do is we have two production data centers that are live all the time. We, we call it a hot warm setup. We'll have one data center where our applications are running live and all the data from that data center is continuously replicated to the warm data center. And then once a year, we'll have an exercise where we, we don't just try coming up in the, in the DR data center. They're both production data centers. We'll just, up and move everything to the other data center and leave everything there for a year and, to, and then go back to the other one. And part of that exercise is to make sure we can do it, uh, make sure both data centers are, you know, ready for prime time, able to support the full production workload on their own. And then um, also that includes the business validation of everything, make sure no data is lost and everything is back to normal. We always do it on the weekend, of course, but then Monday morning, we're back up and running like nothing ever happened. Um, so which computer backup method is the best for you? I would say the one that you actually use. If, if you're picking a backup strategy at home that requires you to 
drag and drop all the files you want to keep one at a time and it takes you an hour every week, you're probably not going to stick to your backup strategy. But if you have something automated using one of these tools and especially one that's not cost prohibitive, then um, that's probably going to be the best one for you. All right, now demonstration time. John, I'm going to stop sharing on this machine and start sharing on my other machine here. I'm assuming you guys can still hear me, of course. All right, I'm gonna share my desktop here. John, can give me a shout out that you can see my desktop on my other machine here? Yes. Move the mic down. Is that a yes? That was a yes. All right, all right. So this is my Linux desktop that I'm running at home. Um, it's my do everything machine that sits next to my work computer. There's a lot of things I can't do in my work computer, like watch YouTube videos about technology and look at certain articles, um, that even that I need for work that I always come to my work machine to use. But the first backup strategy I have on here, well, before I do that, let me show you what my disk layout looks like here. Whoops. So on this machine, I have one um one terabyte nvme drive that holds my root partition and my home partition for my desktop setup then i have two one terabyte spinning hard drives in a basically a raid one array using a better fs file system and so i use this as my backup as you can see it's labeled here so the first thing I want to show is an app called, I'm going to mess it up. I forgot what it was called. It's called Deja Dupe. I don't even know if it even says that anywhere, but it's called Deja Dupe. And the reason I use this one is that it allows me to back up to my Google Drive. And so my Google Drive, I pay a little bit extra to have storage on it, but I don't pay enough to store everything on my machine. The only thing I store in my Google Drive are my documents and important family photos that I never want to lose, right? So let me see if I can. So you can see the location for this backup is my Google Drive. Um, Computron Jr. is the name of this computer. So it creates a folder with that name, backs up automatically. Uh, one thing I don't like about this uh, Deja Dupe application is that it lets you pick daily, but it doesn't let you pick the exact time. And so it does Delta backups. So it, I have a setup to keep three months worth of changes. So if I go to my home directory, or no, I better go into my documents directory here, and I open the terminal here and I say touch uh, test.txt and I create a text file, right? And that text, that test file right here, you can see it on my machine. It's not going to be on the Google Drive yet. But if I run the backup, and this takes a minute because the even though it's a very small text file and it's doing a, um, a backup of one file only, plus any config file changes that might have changed, but probably not very many, um, it still takes a little while to back up to Google Drive just because the connection to Google Drive is a bit slower. All right, it's backing up now. You can see it's backing up test.txe that we just created in the documents folder. Like I said, this is one I have run it, I think midnight. Or no, I'm sorry, I was thinking another one. This one you don't get to say when it's gonna run. My other back, but backup runs at midnight, I'll show that one next. But it's backing up, backing up. It's verifying the backup. And I know this is boring, but I want to show you guys how to actually see the file on the backup. Adam, would you minimize the film strip on the right side? Yes. Yeah, and I did want to show you what the backup looks like on Google Drive. It basically looks like nothing. Here's the backup folder on Google Drive. And all it is is a bunch of duplicity files. Duplicity is the technology that Deja 
do uses on the back end. So unless someone knows how to access these files, you really don't have a chance of losing them. Uh, unless they have access to your Google Drive and know how to access those files. All right, it's still verifying the backup. So we'll come back to that. The, the other backup tool I use is called Pika Backup, and it's based on the open source Borg backup technology. And I have it backing up that one terabyte um, RAID 1 BTRFS, ButterFS array that I use. It's actually a lot faster because there's not a lot of changes happening right now. And because it's a local drive, it's not traversing the internet. So that one's running right here. The one I like about this one is that you can set the schedule. I have it set to run at midnight every day and it'll automatically preserve the archive in a smart way where it'll keep many copies, including all the various changes I've made, but it will um, purge when the drive starts getting full. Oh, so back to this deja vu point, I'm backing up to the Google Drive. If you go to the Restore tab, it's reading Google Drive to see what all backups in Google Drive are available for restore, right? And I just did this backup at 1240 today, but I have all these previous versions of backups on Google Drive. So if I want to go to the one from 2 a.m. this morning, and then I go into documents, I should not see that text.txt. But if I go to the version from this afternoon, it's gonna scan again. And we'll be able to see the incremental backup now has the test.txt file. All right, and then you see that the um, Pika backup to my external hard drive is finished. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to share. John, do I have time to show my server backups? Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, I did want to show you that, that it's also possible to restore the backups on here. Um, let's see here. That's the backup. I was, oh, let's see here. That's not it. On peak and back up. I'm trying to remember how to get it. Okay, you just go to an archive this way. So this is, the, and it lets you browse the files in the backup. Just even though this is a location in the Pika backup database, it makes it look like a folder directory that you can just grab files out of and then copy them to your current home directory or however you want to restore them from that backup. So that's a very handy way that Pika Backup allows you to restore files. So the other option I have, I have a an Unraid server down in my basement. And on the Unraid server, I have this um, multi-disk array of media and files that I keep. And then I have an external drive here called Backup. And I like to do everything using the GUI on my desktop, but on the server, I like to mess around with command shell. So there's a plugin on this Unraid server that allows you to create your own user scripts. And I have one called Backup to External Drive. And if you look at that, oh, actually you can, it runs on a cron schedule at 2 a.m. That's what this zero minutes to hour two means over here. But if you look at the script, it's a one-liner and it basically uses the rsync command to copy everything recursively to the external drive from my um, from my drive array that I have running on the server. And I can even run it now. And it, it basically sends an incremental list and then for any files that have changed, it'll tell you what files being copied, you know, what percentage it's at, and even what speed it's copying at. Speed, you're not gonna see any real speeds unless it gets to a larger file, like this one is gonna be copied a lot faster than some of the smaller ones. But So yeah, that's what I do for fun. That's my fun way of backing up files. Um, happy to take any questions. Did we have any questions, Judy? Yeah, yes I do. 
All right. Hopefully they're not too difficult. Uh, well, there's something I've never heard of. That doesn't mean it's difficult. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any recommendations for backup software for Windows 11? Some of the options that are available for 10 won't work on 11. Ah, uh, you know, um, the only place I use Windows 11 is for my work machine, and we use OneDrive for that. But it's OneDrive for business, and it goes to a corporate server. It doesn't go to the Microsoft OneDrive cloud servers, and there's no limit on what I can back up. Um, but for personal use, I'm hoping one of the other guys will have a recommendation. I, don't, I haven't really looked into what's available on Windows 11. Sorry. I use iDrive. It's out okay, here. And how does that? It's out here in Calabasas. It's two valleys for me. I like to use homegrown stuff, and it's usually one of the high, most highly rated paid backup programs there is. Nice. Uh, I know uh, personally. Go. Well, I was to say personally, I'm looking into Nextcloud, which you can host on your own server, and then Nextcloud allows you to. It's it's kind of like iCloud or. Uh, Google Drive, where you can back up things from, you know, any phone or your desktop or what what have you. I've been watching videos about it, but I haven't got to look into it yet. But NextCloud sounds exciting. Cool. Uh, what about backing up to an external hard drive or thumb drive? Mm -hmm. Yep, you can use the, you can use, you can drag and drop files. There's a number of various tools you can use. Um, I think the other guys are going to be covering some of those. But um, the tools I was showing on my desktop, um, there's similar tools for Windows. But yeah, I mean, if you if you get out there and search for Windows backup software, especially if you get like a lot of people don't spend a lot of time in a Windows store, but the Windows store is going to have probably more trustworthy backup options than what you would find just Googling. OK, this is the one thing I've never heard of, electronic deduplicating. Deduplicating. So, if it's what I'm understanding, uh, the electronic deduplicating is if you're doing a backup and you have, let's say you messed up and you accidentally dragged and drop a folder to a to a subfolder, and so you accidentally have two copies of like 100 files on your machine. When you do the backup, the backup will recognize that the files are the same, and it won't um, it won't back up two copies of the same file. It'll back up two pointers to one copy of the file. If that's, I, that's, I can't, I, I've definitely heard it called deduplicating, but I'm not sure 100% if that's what you're referring to. Thank you. Uh, is Carbonite a reliable product? Um, someone with experience with Carbonite would have to answer that one. I have heard I'm it's very slow. That. Very slow. Yeah. Well, if you don't have a lot of data, if you don't have a lot of data and the speed is an issue, then I wouldn't worry so much about, you know, the speed. But if you have, you know, terabytes of movies and things like that, then it then it becomes an issue. Yeah. If you are um, going with a paid program, my suggestion is, is ask if they will send you an SSD external drive so you can back it up yourself to that, send it back to them, and it, it's free of charge, hopefully, and then they populate your huge backup the first time. That's what uh, you do with iDrive. Oh, nice. So that gives you something to start off, and then everything you do after that's incremental. You got it. And after that, you know, every I, I back I too back up every day because I think my stuff is so darn important. What can I tell you? <laughs> Started that when I was teaching tech classes, didn't want to miss anything that I had created. So yes, okay. Uh here's a Mac question. What is recommended as the best backup approach for a Mac? I have a Dyne Mac Airport backup and I need to replace it. Anybody have any recommendations? I would recommend Time Machine to an external drive. Time Machine's the built-in Mac software that backs up your entire machine. Okay, can Pika, P-I-K-A, be used with a Western digital external hard drive? 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, then I'll just. You hate what? I hate Western Digital. To me, they are very com actually a complicated to set up. They want to do it your way. I'd rather do it my way. What can I tell you? Well, that's probably true about their software. But if you have a Western Digital external hard drive and you're just plugging it in to use it without any extra software, they they work great with Windows and Linux and probably Mac. Mm -hmm. Um, I like Western, I like Western digital drives. They've come a long way. Um, they're on the leading edge of, you know, performance. I like an old fashioned Toshiba. What can I tell you? Anyway, yeah. I don't have any more questions. So Mr. Uh, Kennedy, would you close the chat box, please? And we'll open it up for live Q and A. And give me a second here. And those of you who, um, would like to ask questions that didn't put in the chat box, use the raise hand from your reactions, and that'll put you to the top of the list. And then I can click on your name and uh, have you unmute and do what you want. Mustafa so. with his peacock bear. Yeah, thank you. Adams, thank you very much. Thank you everybody for the backup day. That nice presentation. My question is uh, the home cloud backup, Western Digital and others or Seagate, they have four or five terabyte or what eight terabyte that you can back up. I have two questions, I am not sure. Number one, um, I do like to encrypt it. And, and number two, or maybe I should say number one is that normally this kind of, uh, uh, say the drives come, they have a software inside or some kind of like software that you, I guess it has to be there. Otherwise it doesn't work like iCloud in my opinion, I don't know. So, and if yeah. you have that software, they may collect information for marketing. And I'm not very sure about that, whether I should use that or not. That is the dilemma I have. And because I am not very educated in digital world, <clears throat> I don't know if I can format it first and then and then encrypt it and then I start using it as a back as a, a home cloud, which is only for my devices, nobody else unless they have my password. That is my question. And the reason is that yes, sure. I want to use this one as my computer hard drive because computer is temporary, three to four years, and any time can go back. So and then also I, I want to make two home backup cloud, just if one go bad. One I have as a backup and third one is on the iCloud. Thank you very much for your time and presentation. Yeah, certainly, Mustafa. Good to meet you. Um, yeah, a few answers here. So on the encryption question, something I probably should have put in my presentation, and I'll, and I'll make a note to put in the presentation before I give it to the Lincoln County Computer Society later this month. Um, you want to have encryption on anything that can walk away. So if you have a big heavy tower computer like I have here, I don't encrypt all the internal drives. Um, but if you have an external drive that you're using to as a backup and it's something that somebody could unplug and walk away with, same with a laptop. You want to have your um, you want to have your files and and configuration and everything encrypted on those machines. Um, second part of that question was whether or not you trust Western Digital software because they might be doing what people call calling home. Calling home is when they talk to their um, home server and they probably disclose it somewhere when you click your thing to say, okay, I, I agree with all these, uh, all these uh, terms and conditions. One of those might be, we're gonna you know, call home reporting data so that we can send you ads based on the files that you're saving. That's an extreme example. Um, my best advice there would be to Google the device that you're thinking about um, purchasing, looking to see what kind of calling home it does. Um, even if it does call home and you still want the device because it's, you know, a great price for the amount of storage and you want to use, you know, like Windows built-in backup or some other backup, you could still buy the drive and just don't install the software that comes with it if you don't want to use it. Chances are that device is not going to be calling home if it, all it is is an external drive. Um, also, you mentioned um, being able to back up for the whole home. Um, a lot of those um, home safes that they're coming out with now, 
they'll have an ethernet port in them it's basically a little a miniature nas box you can get them with one drive you can pay more money get them with two drives you can get them with five drives it how, depends on how much you're willing to spend but i know western digital and some of those other companies they make it a lot more simple and then even if you don't have one with an ethernet a lot of home routers will let you plug a drive in usb to the back of the router and that puts your storage on your network there um, and then you can also um, share your storage from your machine. If you have one that plugs in via USB and you have a you know a high terabyte external drive you want to use it to back up all the computers in your house, you can share that drive with the other machines in your house from your PC. Um, there's definitely a lot of tutorials about that online. Definitely more than I'd be able to cover here, but there's abundant abundant options. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Gabe, you're on. Certainly. Hi, thanks. Great presentation. Um, Windows 10 includes the strangely still named Windows 7 backup facility. And so I've been using the Windows 7 native facility on Windows 10. It's capable of doing an image backup. It's capable of doing a full files backup. So I guess I don't understand why anything more complicated is necessary. I mean, sure, I can use, I, I might use, I, I use OneDrive or something else for offsite, but in terms of backing up locally, uh, same, as Windows, same as Windows Defender became adequate so that you don't yes. need, ex, you, you don't need third party antivirus. It's just puzzling right. why Windows 7 backup seems to be deprecated. It seems to not be taken seriously. Well, let's talk about that. Um, I agree on Microsoft Defender. You don't need to buy antivirus for your computer if you have Microsoft Defender. Um, now, when you do your built-in Windows backup, is it saving to the same hard drive that your C drive's on, or do you have a separate drive that it's copying everything to? Se separate drive, external. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's adequate, and if you're happy with that, that's great. You saw my machine. I'm not running Windows, so that's why I had to look at a different option. Um, another thing that a lot of people don't consider when they're running Windows, a lot most people with the Windows computer at home, they probably have the, the hard drive that came in it. They're using the Windows backup and restore. They think they're protected. They have a single hard drive. That hard drive crashes and burns unless they're sp winning to spend a lot of money to send it off somewhere to have the data recovered. They're not protected um, from a single drive failure. Right. Yeah. I, I, and I, I run I run a uh, 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 disk monitor that tells me the health of both my built-in C drive and also the health of the external drive. And so, you know, when the health is 100%, 99%, I'm happy. If I see any deterioration mm -hmm. on the exterior backup drive, I would replace it. And every once in a while, I do exactly what you said. I do a test uh, to make sure mm -hmm. that uh, what I'm writing out there actually is a backup that I can use. Yeah, and I mean, it sounds like you're doing everything you should be program. doing. What was the question, Judy? I, what is the name of that excellent program that you use to monitor? Uh, it's part of it's part of Windows 10. If you go to backup, <laughs> uh, you go to backup settings. No, no, not that. HD Sentinel. Oh, right. Hard, yeah, hard hard disk Sentinel. Uh, not a backup program. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, disk health monitor, and it will tell you about rotating memory and SSDs. And it will give you way more information than you can possibly use. But the most mm -hmm. interesting thing is the health. And I, when I was running a, win, a real Windows 7 system, uh, a hard drive Sentinel uh, started running a doomsday clock. Every 10 days or so, it would tell me that the health of the drive had declined by 1%. And I only had 100% to deal with. And so that was you know, clearly nudging me that I needed to do something right away. And Thank it's you. a bargain besides that. I know. Okay, yeah, it sounds like you're go. in a great spot. What was the name again, please? H.E. Sentinel. Thank you, ma'am. And APCUG has had discounts on it, what, three times, two times? At least. Excellent, excellent program. Uh, Jerry Crow, it's your turn. There we go. Uh, good morning. Thank you. Um, several comments. First of all, Hard Drive Sentinel. I uh, I actually purchased it at one of the times it was discounted for us, 
I've got to get on, but I've never installed it yet. But based upon the, the testimony I just heard, I may go ahead and, and give it a shot. I was simply going to say that first, as regards Western Digital, I, uh, I, every rotating storage drive I have, I believe, is Western Digital. Although I don't buy rotating anymore, I only buy solid state. And, um, and I've got like nine external drives connected up through hubs and all that. And I just do rotating backups here. And I'm old fashioned and dwindling majority, dwindling minority, but I will not put a single byte of my personal data into the cloud, period. I don't care what you call it. You know, OneDrive, iDrive, Microsoft this, Microsoft that. That's just me. Anyway, the last thing, the Cronus, somebody mentioned the Cronus True Image. It's, now it's called Home Office Protect or something. They changed the name. Um, but I use mm -hmm. that, and, and I've I've had really good luck with that. And it, it, most software like that, it, it, the backup, you can look at it, just use Internet Explorer to look at it. Even after the backup is made, okay, you, you can go out there and then look at some of your files and be sure they're there. So it's it's very straightforward. Yeah, and uh, that, that makes me think of another point is that your offsite backup doesn't have to be the cloud. You can save your data to an external hard drive and have an extra external hard drive. Every time you go over to your best friend's house, you take one drive with you, leave one there. That's your offsite yeah, backup. Absolutely. What I've done in the past, and I need to start doing it again, I'm paying for my safe deposit box at the bank. In the past, I've taken drives physical drives and just put them in my safe deposit box as an offsite backup. I used to run backups, yeah. still do. Every day, every year on New Year's Day, I, I would run a, a, a New Year's backup. And for the longest time, I was taking those over to the bank and putting them in. I only back up once a week. Now, of course, the environment atoms in at work, that, that, that would never suffice. They've got to do almost minute by minute backup. But, mm -hmm. but uh, and I probably should back up more often, but I, I just do it once a week. So cool. cool. Uh, Thanks, Jerry. You bet. On to Daniel. Uh, two simple questions. One, I do not understand the purpose of backing up in my machine. I mean, if the machine crashes, I lose all data. What's the purpose of backing up in there? Which leads to the next question. I back up with an external hard drive. And in fact, I I grew up in an era of the floppy disk. Some of you may remember that. <laughs> I mean, I had to have a floppy disk to start the machine. So I've always mm -hmm. stored my data on a an external hard drive. So I've got two of them going, one for backup and one for my data. How can the, the, okay, what's number one, what's the purpose of internal backup? And number two, how can I be sure that the external hard drive used for backup is capturing the data that I actually store externally. Yeah, so for your first question, I think there's a couple of different reasons why you'd want to do an internal backup. Um, the first backup I showed you guys on my Linux, Linux desktop, it's backing up from the NVMe drive to the spinning drive. They're both internal, but they're different drives. If one drive fails, the other internal drive is not necessarily going to fail unless the whole machine is destroyed, you know, run over by a garbage truck or something. Um, the second reason for internal backups, even if you only have one drive, is for saving the session state of your operating system. If you only have one drive and you have Windows on it, and you do a Windows um, backup and restore to that same drive, you install the latest Windows update. Um, while it's installing, a news broadcast comes out saying, don't install the latest Windows update. It crashes your system. It's too late. You're already installing it. But after that's done, your system crashes, you, you uh, start Windows in safe mode or whatever it's called these days, restore to that previous snapshot, even though it's stored on the same hard drive, you can get back to where you were before you made that change to your system. Um, it won't protect you against, obviously, against hardware failure, but it's good for configuration um, issues like the similar to those. And then for the external, how do you make sure your files are there? You can... Um, there's different, I don't have, I don't use any of them, but there's different tools you can use to compare directories like file compare utilities on the web that are available. And you can compare those to the originals. You can go through there with your eyes and do spot check to make sure 
the data is there. That's what I do more than anything. Just spot check, go through a few folders, make sure all the important photos look like they're there. I and then I another thing I look at is the size of the volume. If this is you know 100 gigabytes, is my backup 100 gigabytes? If it's 20 gigabytes, I know I'm missing 80 gigabytes, and I got to figure out what wasn't, what wasn't backed up. But that's the best answer I have for the second one. Thank, Thank you very much. And I create a yeah. test document every once in a while and make sure that it is actually there and I can restore it if I need it. So that's my there you go. And Bill Always Ginsburg, practice the, the rest restoration, yeah. You got it. Uh, Bill Ginsburg is our last question. And Lynn, you're on. Unmute yourself, please. Why can't I get anybody to respond? Are you because you're on mute? Raise hand <laughs> reactions button. Like you're muting that? me. Try John, to, try John, to get, can try you get an answer? Is anybody using? Uh, forget it. John, can you unmute Lynn? We Lynn Gray. Lynn Drake, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, I'm here. Hey, there she is. Thank you. Hi, Adam. I, I know. Are we related? Uh, potentially. Oh. Okay. Is that your I question? Wish. <laughs> I can call you up for all these questions. So we um, we're pretty negligent here. Our computer just crashed. We just got a new one this week, uh, and nothing was salvageable. Uh, it's um, they tore it apart. Uh, we. Um, we're, we're a mess. So we get a new one. We have an SSD drive now. And um, so I was trying to listen because we're, we're not very literate with computers That's why we join the club. Um, but I think we do have one drive and um, my husband here has it, but I'm the one who does everything and has all these files and I need it transferred to me. So I'm trying to figure out, I, I did think we could do a shared folder but I really want to just be the administrator of that. I don't know if anybody knows how to handle OneDrive. And the other question- I got to say, that's a that's a case I've never heard of. And I would recommend Googling how to, you know, how to transfer ownership of a OneDrive. There's got to be yeah, some, there'll be a I, result on a Microsoft site out there. Yeah, that's what I think the share folder is. We might just cancel that and just nope up a new one and make it easier like that and then do a shared folder. The other question, we have a Seagate. We, we never tested this one to see if it was backing up. And when um, uh, Geek Squad transferred it over, some files, they're all NBI, and I'm not sure how to open up an NBI file. That's not a format I've ever heard of, NBI. I saw your question come up in the chat. Um, let me look up NBI file extension on the web here, see what it is. Geek Squad brought those over. He said you could just also go into your um, hard drive and but I, it I seems like you need a it seems like you need a file an application called back it up formerly back, back it up and burn a program used to compress and back up files it looks like back it up all one word and that will let you read the, the file up in the file you know. yeah That's, I mean it looks like it's a file archive that you can open with back it up and and you should be able to restore yeah. your files using the back it up software. Not one I've heard of, but if the Geek Squad copied it over in an MBI format, then they have also restored it from restored your files from that format. But it sounds like they maybe they didn't. Do you think they did that because that's what they use? Because maybe uh, otherwise I'll try looking into the Seagate. I'm not sure. But going forward, I think OneDrive for Windows because we now have a Windows 11, so that would be the best. And I I talked to somebody else who used to do. Of a photographer I know, and he he just uses USBs, and he says, and then important stuff he puts in the OneDrive, and he just got rid of everything else. That's pretty much what I do. I put my important photos and documents in Google Drive, you know, the Google version of OneDrive, and then everything else that I back up, I back up to you know external hard drives and to my server here in the house, but. The only thing that I store technically offsite in the cloud are, are my what I consider irreplaceable photos and um, documents, tax documents, all that stuff. Well, my cool. phone is the Apple, so that's backed up. So I, it, when, when I think now, we didn't really use everything, but you mentioned about going to um, file 
history? You think I could pull up something after mm. I crashed and pick it up? After you deleted it? Uh, I didn't. No, the, the computer, the hard drive that crashed. Um, but now that I'm on Windows, do you think I'm able to pull up in file history uh, any of those previous files? Um, no, not if they were lost. Oh. Right. Oh, uh, in the hard drive. Okay. All right. I okay. see somebody anxiously trying to get in there. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Very informative. But uh, it just teaches uh, us how much we don't. How much we don't know. Got it. Over to Jim Glass. Yeah. Hey, Jim. You unmute yourself. I did try carbonite, and it is really slow. Ha. Huh. Mm. <laughs> so I, I thank you, Judy, for turning me on to iDrive because they do give you that hard drive and their support is excellent. I did have to use it and you could just go into your cloud and see your files right there and work from it on their system. So it's a good uh, external backup. I also use an external hard drive, but I so strongly recommend that between backups with an external hard drive, you disconnect it from your computer. Because if you have a power failure or something goes wonky in your computer, if your backup hard drive is disconnected, you don't lose anything. Yep. I right. also, or I also, if you go ahead. Yeah, or if you have a malicious software in your computer that's destroying your files, you don't want it to access your external hard drive as well. So I exactly. my my external hard drive that I use has a switch on it, and I just switch it off when I'm not using it. Yeah, yeah well, I do too. I use a hub. But I also like um, Google Drive because it syncs with everything. I paid uh, yeah, it went on Windows. Two, $2 it doesn't sync on month. You know, it's two dollars a month for a huge amount of storage. Most of us won't even go beyond the OneDrive. What is it, 15 gigabytes? I mean, mm -hmm. you, most people don't realize how much information can be stored in that. I want to put my hand up. For those uh, people who use Linux, forget you ever heard us talking about iDrive. Uh, John Kennedy used it for quite a while, and he uh, went on to what he's going to give in his presentation mm -hmm. that is starting right after Bill Ginsburg's question. You're on, Bill. Hey, Bill. Is that Bill Ginsburg? Am I on? Yes. Yeah, your okay. name is Bill Ginsburg. Right, okay. Um, I'm on a Mac and I use Time Machine to a one terabyte SAND disk. Doesn't take very long. Then I have a second SAND disk as an external drive, and I copy all of my MS Word files to this. And it makes much easier if I accidentally delete a file or something like that, I can just search back. And I, um, I've kept the, uh, the history of them, so I can actually go back um, six months and find a file that I may have deleted and that works very simply and then uh, photographs uh, I put on uh, a third sand disk uh, my next plan is to duplicate all of this and have one set of copies off-site a computer uh, professional friend in his own house very carefully backed up all the time and then he had a fire in his computer room Ooh. and <laughs> um, he wanted a lot of family photographs fortunately uh, photographs that he liked he sent off to friends and then he called up all his friends and said hey send me back my photos okay. Whoops. Um, these things happen hey bill good good ideas with that truly uh, Stu, put your question in the chat box when um, we open it up again, please, and just put an A in front of your question so I'll know it's for Adam. Steve Sears, do you know where the reaction button is on your Zoom toolbar? No. Would you please look down at your Zoom toolbar? Reactions. There's a little happy face Got on it. top of it. Are you using a PC? Yes. 
Okay, let's, do you see the word leave? He, he said he saw it. Okay, then click. I got, the, I got the reaction box, but I don't see where I put up my hand. Click on reactions. I did. And it says raise hand. Yeah, it says raise hand. It says thumbs up, but it doesn't say raise hand. Oh, you need to update your version. You're, yeah, you're using a, very a old version old. that's a thousand years old. Yeah, the I reason we do that question. is because, Steve, there are seven screens. We can't see everybody. That's why we use the raise hand so you come up to us. Go ahead. What's your question? And it's just like kindergarten. We take turns in order. I understand that. And why I'm raising my hand so somebody cues me. Well, we can't see all of we the people's hands. People. There's 164 people on, on seven different screens. And we can only see mm -hmm. like 25. So go ahead. I use a package called Synology. Had it for years. And it allows me to use cameras also in a database orientation. Has anybody used it? And do they have any problems with it? Um, I've definitely heard of Synology. I've never used it. I've heard nothing but good things about the Synology um, devices. I know they're a um, very popular set of NAS devices that you can purchase. And I've heard, I mean, you can run Docker containers on them. They're very versatile and I've heard very good things about them. So I think that sounds like an excellent choice. Well, Mr. Thank Adam, you, you need you. to get back to work and we thank you. I do, I do. A thousand yep. thank you, <laughs> truly. Hey, if anything great. else comes up, um, send me an email and I'll be happy to answer any other questions. I knew that. that. And I'd <laughs> like right. to thank, I'd like to personally thank Adam since he's from my club for coming in at the last minute, which was yesterday afternoon. Luckily, he hey, had my this, pleasure. Luckily, he had this presentation getting ready for my club's group. And so I said, hey, can you do it? So we thank you very much for that.